Okay, so this is <laughs> this class is called advanced leg lock entries and labeled as intermediate. So um, this is confusing as my personality. Um, we're going to start off with some K guard stuff. Uh, I always enter K guard from a triangle defense, um, and everything happens here when somebody stands up, right? So all of our defenses, uh, all of our follow-ups are happening from a standing opponent, and so you're getting triangled. I want you to work to a stand-up defense which is super common, especially in no-gi grappling. Uh, from there, we'll transition to our K-guard, and we'll show how I've changed my K-guard. Uh, I think I have taught four or five seminars for Globetrotters for K-guard, and it's all shit. Like, grappling changes really quickly, and none of that stuff works anymore. So, we're on to the new things. Um, any questions so far? Yes, you can do it. Yes, you'll be upside down. Yes, we are gonna heel hook. Yes, it's the last class of camp. And yes, we're all gonna play hide and seek later. Yes. So, alright, we're in a triangle. We have this big, strong opponent here, but I just cannot control. She works to a stand up. Alright, my K guard entry has to be on my over top leg, not my under leg. Okay, and so I'm gonna underhook her leg, preparing for this to fail. Alright, at this point, I know I cannot triangle her. All I wanna do is hold on long enough to get my underhook here. Alright, I'm gonna drop my choking leg into my K guard, All right? It looks very similar to Laura's class, All right? And from here, this leg swings around the outside. Here, All right? I want us to get to right here first, All right? It's kind of a lot already, but we can all do this. So, I don't care how you get to your triangle, your postures, underhooking, I'm just gonna snake down. Right here. It's not so advanced. Even Adrian can do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll fuck it up. <laughs> Let's try it. Ready? That wasn't that bad. I was expecting. But, so, uh, big thing here is making sure that I am elevating up to a shoulder stand. Uh, I have to get elevated. I can't lay flat on my back and make that spin around. Um, and it's really important because I have to be able to elevate my opponent momentarily just to have them be light on the leg I want to attack, okay? So traditionally with K-Guard, we would chop them down to all fours and play backside 50-50, right? So I would go, she would elevate, I'm under, I'm looking to chop her here. But people are getting really good at defending this, and really even if her knee line is still trapped, as I look at my heel hook, it becomes a really hard finish here, right? So this happened at West Coast Trials. Uh, it was uh, Keith Corian's finals match. Uh, guy just sat back on him heavy and just kind of paused him here for a long time. It's really hard to get a break here. Uh, so we were having a really deep heel hook day one from here. And it was really tight and he was like, it just doesn't work. And it doesn't work. Yeah, so, uh, so guys are really good at defending this. Um, and usually they're looking to back step immediately to a true 50-50. Right, so just like that. Into here. All right, I don't like 50 50. And so it's just inherently a bad position because it's 50 50 and that makes no sense. All right, I want to always be winning. And so, how we're going to change this is by not, let's just go for setup. Is we're not going to look for a chop. I want to spiral around her leg so much so that it causes her knee to come out this direction and her foot to elevate this way. Yeah, don't fall. Just stand there. Yeah? So now the heel's exposed, she has no time to figure four because, you got this? Good. She can't figure four because she's still balancing on her, on her, uh, on her right leg. And so now I can cup the heel and we can land with the break, uh, break happening in the fall. Right? Ideally, I like to break them on the way to the ground. Um, that way they're focused on falling and not focused on defending. So it's dangerous, yes? Like anything else. So um, the only part of a heel that becomes dangerous is the rotation of the, of the heel, which breaks the knee. Everything else is pretty safe. So just make sure we have uh, a loose application of the heel cup while training, and then we can add tension as we go. And then once you guys get really comfortable learning uh, what the threshold is for anybody's knee, because it's very similar for person to person to person, uh, then we can start applying full pressure. Uh, our goal is always with all of our submissions uh, to go from 0% breakage to 99% breakage and stop right there. All right? if I can take you from zero to 99% of your threshold for flexibility and I can pause there that makes it very hard for you to escape and you know immediately you're got but nobody ever gets broken 
right? That's gonna be the goal. So, everything look good here. We have a triangle. She postures up. I cannot stop this, all right? I can fight this battle, but really, every lower body submission attack should be, should be the result of a failed upper body attack. We attack upper body to expose lower body. We expose lower body to attack upper body, right? I snake my way down to wrap myself around, right? So from here, I have to make sure I'm elevated enough to sit, uh, walk back towards me. So I end up here on the inside of it, yeah? So I'm going to do it faster because it's really hard to be super slow. Keep hands up. Here. All right? So we're all the way through. We're skipping our backside entry, which is what standard K-guard usually is. We're snaking all the way around like a spiral. All right? Ideally, stand up. I'm landing in a standing 50-50, but I already have what I need. So I'm laying on your, okay, your bad leg? Yep. I already have my heel cup when we fall, all right? If we have, um, um, Paul, can I use you? Is that okay? Um, like a bigger guy, because Paul's huge. <laughs> he's almost my size. He called us all little guys day one. We cannot roll and he's like, it's good to have more little guys here. I'm like, fuck you, man. <laughs> right? So he stands up. Right? So right away, as I'm going to the snake here, I'd like to be under here. Right? This is where I really want to be. Because now his counterattack is on this leg. Right? He can't counterattack this top leg. And he's going to be falling to a hip that allows me to land already with tension. Yeah? So we already know this guy wants to stand up to defend the triangle, which means he wants to continue to stand. Standing opponents rarely like to go to the ground. They want to continue to stand until it's their terms. So he's fighting aggressively to stay standing as I spiral around to expose the heel. Once the heel is exposed, my position becomes much stronger than his one leg balance, and I can put him to a hip then, and the tension comes on on the way down, yeah? Sure. Does that make sense to everybody? So it's a dynamic movement, uh, but it's contingent upon top side player not wanting to go down to the ground. If they want to go to the ground, I'll break them down to traditional backside to the 50, right? But they're trying hard to stay up on their feet the whole time. One more time? Yes. All right. Only the bigger person. That's the triangle. Failing. I'm here. I'm going to come down. Spiral underneath. Now I'm here. All right? So now his heels off the ground because, uh, plant your heel. Yeah, he can't this here. So I can keep it bent, I can keep it exposed, I can cup it, right? He's got a plant with his left hand. The rule with your hand plant is, if you plant once and I keep it weighted, you can't replant it. Yeah, if I keep it weighted, it's really hard to move again, I can put it down. And there's our break. Mm. And then we'll talk about our break next, and then we'll go on to a secondary submission that involves the heel hook also. Cool? So. Be a good uki on this one, right? If your uki if, or reacts the wrong way, submission goes apart. If the offensive player, this goes for every technique you do in jiu-jitsu, if the offensive player gets a feed that's not accurate, maybe he pushed the person the wrong way, yeah? We talked about this in Laura's class, right? When I switched to the X-guard over the head, that leg's too far away from me, I caused that to happen. So I have to redirect my, my legs, now it's closer to me. So. If they fall forward, a combination of two things could have happened. The uke fell forward. If that's the case, I would choose a secondary technique. This is the wrong technique for that scenario. All right? If I pushed them the wrong way, then it's my fault. I caused the wrong application for the wrong technique. Yeah? Let's try that. Ready? Here's the rule with jiu-jitsu. If I have one question, you suck. If I have 30 questions, I suck. So let's fix this shit, right? It's really important to understand how I want to finish this. Um, and, and there's so many levels of complexity here because we're learning, uh, some of us are learning backside for the, for the, same, for the first time and K-guard for the first time and then heel hooks for the first time and then Aminari rolls for the first time and we're adding all these together in like one technique and then hoping that you land in a position that can break someone's leg. And um, it's a lot to try to have happen in one moment. Yeah, and so, um, Paul, can I use you again? There you go. Okay. 
So, like I said before, there's a difference. So, with my, my grappling specifically, but in most modern grappling, um, I can cause a very few things, right? There's very limited things that I can cause to happen, right? So, I need to pick my, uh, my tool that's correct for the job. So, if Paul stands up, he's giving me a couple options here. I have what I need, right? I can maybe go to the arm bar, I can try to fight the triangle, but I'm gonna go to the legs. So inside. If I land in a way that Paul is falling that way already, I'm probably gonna stay on the backside 50-50, right? And this is where learning these more advanced entries really becomes nuanced because I have to do the right thing and so does he whilst both learning it, right? So it gets really tricky there. And so when I start my entry here, I have to make sure I clear my head on his shin, okay? And so this elevation is really important. Right, like I should be able to do like a back and roll. It's like that momentum. So I'm clearing through. And it feels like an Imanari roll, right? At that point, we go Imanari roll, come around the outside. If I keep my head here, if I look at what's happening here, it's impossible to heel hook him from this position. I have to have his knee over here, or his hair here, and his heel on this side of me. There's just no scenario I can do it here. So I have to get myself into a proper heel hook position before I start falling to the ground, right? If I turn to here, I have to try to push Paul over a super strong support, which is his uh, right leg. He can step back. And we all know that like putting someone to their butt from 50-50 is challenging. Right? It's a really, really hard feat to accomplish from here. It's no different than playing single leg X. Single leg X is kind of kind of falling out of terms because I can get to a single leg X and I can. It's hard to anchor someone to the ground from here. Right? So it's a pretty weak connection because of how I'm oriented. I have to push somebody over a strong heel and then a, a wandering leg. Really challenging. Okay? So when I enter this, just go from the stand-up. Yeah? I've got to make sure I clear my head and I want to stop halfway between front side 50 and back side 50 50. Okay, so I'm gonna bypass backside and stop right here. Okay, so now my hip pressure goes over a very weak post, right? Like if I were to try to chip him over this leg, it's impossible. If I break him down this way, he's sitting into a heel hook. Okay, so I don't wanna push him far away from me. A great escape from any sweep is to get distance. So I can't give him distance. I wanna hug him. Pull him in almost like me on belly, and then sit him. Now his heel is super exposed. Does that make sense? So, one more time. We fell out of our triangle. I have the hook. If my head is lazy, it's in the way. If my head is active, it's out of the way. Take it four, get the heel right here, and then sit. We're at a point where that back sit's probably pretty harmful at that point. Yeah? So be really careful there. Does that clarify any questions? Does it cause more questions? <laughs> it's only gonna get worse. Can you do it again? Try it. Yeah, one more time. All right, so I'm fighting this triangle. He's just too strong. I'm gonna fight. So, yeah. Here. Is it better or worse to use fast? Completely different, but probably different. It was that. It was that. Yeah. One more time, but slow motion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So easy. So Do it. Go. So, people are failing this because of one thing. They're doing too much work too soon or too, too, they're too active. Yeah? So you're doing a full, like, spin, like, Imanari roll, and then it's causing you to be out of the orientation you need. Right? So there's a huge difference between a standing 50-50 and a standing, whatever you want to call it. It's in the middle of that and back side of the 50. Right? So, make sure, just go from stand up. That we're clearing our head, right? And I'm stopping not here. That's too far, 
right? Now we just entered a standard KD50. This is terrible, okay? If I revert myself back, this is where I want to be, right? This is a strong position to be in, okay? Because now I can break her down over that leg and land directly into my heel, okay? We're just a little, we're a little too active, that's all. And we're, we're getting, uh, we're doing a great job of being little break dancers. And we're spinning around like, even our big guys are doing a great job of this. Um, we're just not seeing the end result uh, in how we need to have it landed, just so we can have a higher percentage. Don't be afraid to take um, a, a, a technique like this and turn it into just a sweep. You know, you can't do heel hooks. There's no reaping here. You're allowed to just break them down to a hip and get up. Okay, so it's a great way to take a failed submission in our triangle. All right, we're doing a good job. So she does a better job. I come inside. I break her down to the hip. Start passing 50-50 from here. All right, and if you're a small guy, we play this stupid game where we do this. I get my two points. Yes. <laughs> two points is fucking the worst thing in the world. But we'll talk about passing 50-50 at another time. So. That's our basic K guard, our basic K guard entry, right? So, um, but everything has a defense and everything should have a follow up to it, right? So um, guys are getting really good at stopping that secondary leg from spinning around the outside. They know that this is really bad, right? So they do a couple things well. Um, they often will just grab a hold of that foot, which is a momentary fix. I can usually clear that foot pretty easily. And then I'm really aggressive in my chop behind them, right? But ultimately with any matrix style technique, where I reach behind the, the near side leg with my outside leg. Um, if they turn back into me, they change the angle and their backside's much farther for me to, you know, to, to get to. And so that's where we're gonna switch to our false reap. So if we're in a standing position and I'm looking for my entry here and all she has to do here is turn her back away from me by stepping into my legs, right? Just right here. And now it's really hard, and she's going to aggressively keep, almost like knee cut passing, but taking her weight towards me and following me. Yeah, right? And now I'm having a hard time, and if she had adds in grabbing a hold of my foot, and then turn your hips like uh, parallel to me. Now this is impossible, right? I have other things to follow up, but I've lost my K-guard entry. She stopped that swing around, okay? But what that does is it gives me access to her inside knee, uh, especially if she comes like, go like, uh, here, yeah. Now it's really hard to get to the outside. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna sit up and I'm gonna grab a deep, it has to be elbow pit to knee pit, a super deep grip here. And I'm gonna switch my feet to the inside. All right, so now we're in false reap. So we call it false reap because I'm reaping, um, but there's not an outside protector of her leg, meaning I, there's no outside control piece. Everything to the inside, my arm doesn't count. And so um, I can't heel hook from here, but I can enter my position from here quite well, okay? And so we fell out of our triangle and we're under hook. She steps in deep and grab. All right, nice deep grip. This leg comes to the inside, both feet go in between. All right, don't cross your feet. I usually stack mine, but really you can leave it flat on the ground because you're gonna go there later anyway. All right, so if you wanna play this game from the very beginning, we'll go from the triangle. She postures up tall. I go to snake, she steps in deep. Sit up, legs on the inside. All right. I cannot have a wrist deep grip. All right, this, this is shit. I gotta sit up into it. I put my head behind my leg. <laughs> I gotta be in here, all right? Um, this, this will have some flexibility for all, some of us, but let's see if we can find this false reposition, position and we'll play from here next. Any questions on that? Person being the okay, who's giving the feed, understand that you don't want them seeing your backside. So she goes to play this game with me. Just come from the stand up from the, the K guard. All right, if I do this, she has no reason to go false reap. She would pick the first technique. So we can start stopping that. And now she takes her left arm and I'm gonna my leg. And now she's false reap. Super simple, yeah? <laughs> this one really is, don't laugh at that. We're doing backflips next, so. <laughs> All right, let's try it, ready? Uh, Good, good, good. <laughs> uh, almost with everything that we do here, uh, the, the common theme is uh, very minimal surface area on the mat. Right? I have to be up on my edge, I have to be up high. Uh, I'm on the ball of my shoulder a lot. I'm kind of like really up into these shoulder stands, right? So I've got to be up here 
I can't play flat on my back from any of these. So when I'm in false reap, I'm in a deep underhook here, and I have both feet inside, but I'm still on my shoulder, right? So if I put myself flat on my back from here, I can still make something happen, but I have a long way to go. Anything I want to do from false reap flat on my back is a result of me getting off my back, back up onto an edge, and me coming back underneath, right? And so the ability to hold ourselves like on our shoulder is really important. So make sure we create that tension where we can balance here. Now we have our deep false reef. Both feet are hidden behind their thighs. And I can start to make my Grammy roll underneath them. Very similar to the first technique, right? It's the same exact um, finishing entry, only we're gonna move to saddle as opposed to moving to 50-50, okay? So looking at it like it's more of like an isolated technique. If you talk about an opponent just keeping square to us, the same thing can happen from here, right? If her right leg steps deep into me, I start grabbing it, right? Even from here, it's a pretty strong position, right? So she has a long way to go, go like knee cut pass. Yeah, right, go here. So she has not what she can do from here. But if I don't have the other hook on the leg, obviously this is a knee cut pass. So this is huge here. Now this leg has to find its way inside. This can be tough, especially if they're nice and low and they're trying to fight this. Right, I've got to work hard to make this work. But I can use my upper body extension. We can fight here. We get to the inside. Right? If I'm landing in this false three and I'm flat on my back, so flatten me out. Yeah. Then I have work to do. Okay? On one side, I have an elevated heel that I want to attack. But, this, but the bad part is I have a long way to go to get there. Okay? So I have a, a leg that's catching and a leg that's receiving. Right? So I have a caught leg, which is our caught arm, which is my left arm. Receiving arm is my right arm, so I have to roll underneath him. So I get back to an edge, up onto my shoulder. Come underneath, so we pause here. Here's where I have to take my false reap and turn it into a real reap. So my secondary leg goes in front. And we sit. And so now we're in the saddle. Okay, so. We can start right from here. I'm gonna do a sit up, an underhook. Outside leg checks the hip, nice and deep, all around top, keeping on my edge. From here, come in, we sit here, okay? Once we're here, I gotta make her move. She doesn't wanna move, right? She wants to stay strong and basey at me. So I'm gonna come under the leg, step out. Is there okay? So, in the beginning, we have our triangle. Did a good job, she postures up. Okay, she stepped, ooh, oh, I lost it. She steps in deep. Catch, switch. Underneath. Any questions? Mine. 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 Do it one more time. Yeah, of course. Yes. It was just the whole thing. Just the false reef. The whole thing. <laughs> she postures. I'm just buying myself time here. All right, making sure I'm ready for it. I want to. I want her to really stand up tall. So I got to sell this. I know I've lost it. I'm pulling. She's trying to posture up tall. Oh, now she's far away. Then I can step behind. All right? Or she steps in. I sit up. Switch my feet. Be on the inside. Okay. If I can elevate my hip, or if she drives over my head, I can leave my feet where they are to my Grammy roll. If she has a stronger base, bottom side leg gets to the mat, and lift. Now, here's the hard part, right? This is where Jiu Jitsu is getting more and more modern. She will aggressively hook my leg with her right toes. She knows that I have to clear that. So I may have to use a secondary arm. Okay. Does that help? Does that help? Does that help you on YouTube? It's fucking stupid. All right, let's go. Ready? I'm trying to get underneath. Okay. Hey, in this class, I'll take close. Close is pretty fucking good. All right. So uh, here's the cool thing, right? Everything that I do, whether it's this class or any other class, is usually a product of utilizing what's given to me and not forcing it to happen. 
right? And so uh, we worked here with a great group, black and a brown belt. The feed was not right, right? It was just the wrong feed. And so it made the technique feel really hard. And so a lot of these things that we teach are really dependent on things happening a certain way. That isn't to say they can't happen that way. And it isn't to say I can't force them to happen that way, or I can't kind of nudge them that direction, right? And so uh, we'll learn that oftentimes with our techniques, um, we fight ourselves by pushing people off of us or pushing people away from us when we should be hugging them in nice and tight, by being too active with our hips when we should be relaxed with our hips. All that stuff matters immensely for being successful in a chain of events, right? So much has to go right. Um, the reality is um, this, the, the, the the shallow K guard entry uh, is really, really well done. Um, the timing usually happens really well, especially when the triangle feed is accurate, right? And so um, this series comes from ADCC, um, Craig Jones versus Nicholas Baragali. Uh, he has a great breakdown of what we just did tonight. And so he used it at ADCC. Um, he didn't finish the hill, but all the entries were the exact same. And so it's very, very relevant with what's happening currently in Jiu Jitsu. And that's a really important piece to think about because we oftentimes get in the habit of teaching outdated things and just do very, very modern. It, it progresses very quickly, okay? Um, a couple of really good questions. If the person is very massive and heavy, um, right? and, and I have a hard time lifting them, right? So I get into my false three, and they're just being a really strong base here. So go ahead, me on the chin. Yeah. Get you on. Right? So, and I just can't move, right? We talked about it briefly, but really utilizing the secondary leg. All right, I can drop this leg anywhere, and she still has no guard pass. You know, there's no threat here to the guard pass. And so um, if I keep my right side on the mat, and I spin in a circle, I have a long way to go. Right? It's really hard to get her to move. So if I go to a shoulder roll and duck my head underneath, that's much more efficient. Mm. Right? So if I extend my hips here, the whole thing falls apart. Right? If I push her away from me, then like, yeah, I shit the bed, okay? And so I gotta make sure I'm being active when I'm supposed to be active and loose when I'm supposed to be loose. So I have my false rate, right? I want her loaded on top of me. I wanna balance her until I break her, right? And so I come underneath, my butt goes up, and through here, all right? This is the best time to grab your heel hook because now she can't cross her ankles quite so well She's still focused on making herself stay on top, right? She, I can't stay here forever. This is very, very quick. But I catch my heel, and then I start sitting her down to her broken hip, and it's immediately on, okay? So I have to be loose enough to keep her on top of me and well positioned, and tighten up not to lose the position. Super, super nuanced, okay? Impossible to learn this series in one hour. But it's fun, right? And you just go the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, and you keep flowing with it. Any last minute questions? I expect everyone to do this whole thing all over the mat. <laughs> we'll all go to the party tonight with like broken heels. And knees, it's all fucking gross. Yeah, then we'll play hide and seek. Most importantly, it's gonna be fucking cool. Last year was not weird at all, but <laughs> this year is gonna get fucking weird. Weird camp gets weird. Yeah, you'll hear crushes down the hallway. Yeah. It's good. Good. Um, let's get a photograph. And then we'll roll until we die. All right, everyone, please.